Okay, can. So I will talk about <laughs> like, why we call ourselves corn artists. Yeah, yeah, because you're the one who came out of here. Right? Hey guys, I'm Sarah and I'm Sherms and we are full-time artists living in Singapore. Yeah, so welcome to episode. the first episode of Con Artists. So um, we call ourselves Con Artists because um, we are convention artists mm. and then like it's basically how we met also like it's through, mm. through conventions and stuff like yeah, that. I think the so. first time I met Sherms, it was probably at AFA. Uh, yeah, anime AFA? Fest Asia, yeah. right? Yeah, and then I'm not sure which year do you remember. Tw- 2018, yeah, I think. I think it's 2018. Tw- yeah, maybe 2018. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we didn't actually talk. Yeah, yeah. I just bought stuff from her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, we started this podcast because we realized that um, we like talking to each other a lot about mm. um, about anything really from like anime and manga we also give each other advice on yeah. on conventions and stuff like that so mm, we realised that running business and stuff like that yeah so we realised that some people might also benefit from uh, listening to you know what we have to say I mean mm. how we personally do things might also help you guys yeah so, so that's why we thought we have a lot of yeah. like years of experiences um, being full time artists and I thought it'd be interesting to share our journey and kind of have people take away from our experiences instead of like being like us having to figure everything out step by step, you know. Mm. So and also yeah. being being a convention artist, uh, we just call con artist. Mm. Being a con artist is kind of a new thing. Mm. Um, it definitely started getting very popular around mm. um, like four or five years ago, I think, mm. because. Um, making things and stuff like that is starting to become more popular. Yeah. And I guess small businesses as well has mm. been booming. Yeah, I think ever since the COVID situation, right? Like being online and having your art exposed in social media is much more accessible. Accessible. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people are very excited to see new art. Especially like anime fan art or original art. So I think a lot of artists are taking this chance to be more seen, to be more exposed to the public. And I think running a business based off your art is also getting easier because of social media. Of social yeah. media and like, you know, selling things online is being more and more accessible to everyone no matter where you live in Singapore right we are full-time artists in Singapore I still feel like it's not a very common job oh uh, yeah definitely yeah yeah and to have Shams um with me on this journey is actually really important because it's very hard to find a fellow full-time artist you know exactly in the same position as you are you know doing a Japanese inspired art illustrations and then putting them on merchandise and making a living out of it is still a very difficult thing to find Mm. yeah yeah just going back a bit so um, I'll just introduce myself first so um, I'm Sherms uh, I mean my I do art and I mm. mainly feature um, yokai. If, yeah, like this. If you're watching the video, <laughs> you can see this. So I basically, it features um, Japanese and like a little bit of Chinese inspired uh, mythological creatures Iki. like Tanuki, Kitsune, mm. um, yeah, like Inugami, Oni, Oni, Oni. Mm. Kappa. I enjoy doing art based on these. Uh, creatures like their lore behind it yes. and everything I find it very cool basically yeah. she created a whole world <laughs> right like based off this Japanese lore mm. yeah and then for me I'm Sarah and I've been running an independent label for eight and a half years yeah so it's a one man show started this in 2013 yeah right out of graduating from a design school so my label is called Sarah Thursday and basically sell merchandise based off my original and also tribute illustrations like fan art so my most popular merchandise would be t-shirts yeah this is not my but <laughs> <laughs> yeah t-shirts uh, everything's mostly in black and my illust- illustrations are like black white and red so 
um, you'll see a lot of the accent color in my work. Yeah, and my work's also based off Japanese culture, I would say. Mm. Yeah, a lot of them are inspired by Japanese culture. And also, it's a bit on the darker side. Yeah, I guess since we are both convention artists and stuff, being inspired by Japanese culture mm. and stuff like that is kind of like yeah. the norm. Yeah, it's yeah. the norm. It kind of interlinks with all that we are doing right now. For me, actually, I started my labor first. Mm. And then only four or five years later, did I enter the convention scene. Okay, so for me, it's, it's a bit different. Yeah. I... I've been doing conventions for a while, but I was doing like um, fan art and, and stuff. Mm. And then um, I gradually found my own label, my own brand. And then it went on to like um, just because I started um, sharing a table with a group of friends. Mm. And then I realized that I'm starting to expand a lot more and I'm, I was taking up a lot of space. <laughs> and then I realized that my earnings I, I was able to get Support my own, own booth. get my own booth so from there it just grew and then mm. yeah and then you approached me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's kind of a little bit about us and what we do yeah we started this podcast as as we said because um, yeah we talk a lot <laughs> we yeah talk we talk for each. hours and we we like to talk about like the nitty gritty details of uh, running a business so we talk from anything about packaging to how mm-hmm. packaging affects what your customer thinks about you, um, the quality of your material, you know, like stickers. Like there are so many different materials you can use for stickers, print, t-shirts, even bags and stuff like that. So all these are very, very interesting to us. Yeah. And like kind of just want to let people into our world because... I think these things are not really spoken much. Hmm. Yeah, in public, especially. Yeah, yeah, especially since a lot more artists are coming out and trying mm. to be independent. Mm. So we hope that, you know, by doing this podcast, we might be able to, you know, share a little bit mm. of our knowledge and mm. get you started on <laughs> booting your own. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe your own journey. You don't have to booth, I guess, but uh, getting you started on your own artist journey and letting you kind of hear about our experiences right and maybe you can understand that it's not impossible to be a full-time artist yeah Mm. it it seems like a very distant goal to some of the younger generation i think we just want to share what we've been through because reaching this point it took years and years of learning on our own and i think um, because I started about 8 years ago I didn't have any mentor Or any like Examples in Singapore Where I could see myself in mm. um, For me I started um, Attending conventions I think in, in 2006 And at that time There was pretty much um, No no such thing As like an, an artist alley Or, or an mm-hmm. art market It was, it was literally just um, true. A few tables and people were just selling like badges and I remember um, when they were selling like laminated uh, laminated art mm. with a keychain oh, yeah. atta- attached to it or like, like the, it wasn't even acrylic charms the it was bookmarks like, right yeah. yeah bookmarks from there it, it's interesting to see how everything just grew into like now there is a proper artist alley and, and everything and actually it's probably the biggest attraction <laughs> yeah. for people to come to conventions because they want to support like independent artists mm. and you're buying straight from the source you're buying from the person that created the art the person that made the art and I think it's a very interesting world you wanna mm. talk about your history <laughs> history like how I started yeah. I think the question that Shams and I both get the most is how we started and how we got to this place. Where we are at now. Where we are yeah. at now. Yeah. Like how did we even get to the point where we could be earning enough to support um ourselves mm. in Singapore because our cost of living is quite high here. Oh, it's it's yeah. very high. <laughs> it's very high. Everything <laughs> requires a lot of money. Yeah. Like, it's not impossible, but it 
you you definitely have to work for it. Yeah. So so we hope that you know by being like talking about uh, things and everything mm. will help you on your journey and stuff. Yeah. So I think that's why we are gonna like talk about how we started. I started right out of graduating polytechnic, right? So I was in Tomasic Design School. I studied visual communications and I majored in illustration. So that was where my passion lied. Like I drew since I was six years old, mm. and and then I think when I was like in like eight or ten years old, I started drawing manga. And back then, you no know, cupcake sakura was like really big oh, yeah. thing. So I was drawing shaoran and <laughs> stuff like that. It all started with imitation, right? Mm. Yeah, I was in primary school. I was just drawing fan art of the characters that I liked a lot, and that's how I learned. How to expand my mm, manga style back then? You know, it was such a big thing. Yeah, when you're young, you're like, oh, I wanna draw manga. I wanna be a manga artist. So I grow the <laughs> yeah. our dreams. Yeah, were and all then all the same. Yeah, so throughout my childhood and teenage years, I was just drawing, and I grew different styles over the years. So I always knew that after O levels. I would want to pursue something to do with design or illustration, and so I went to uh, di- uh study visual comms. Yeah. So yeah. So you started your brand right after you graduated from. Um, not right after, comms? but right after graduating, I was planning it already. Oh, so you yeah. you never had the thought of like going to work in a company or, or <laughs> you you knew you were gonna do your own I, brand your your own label I knew yeah because I can't imagine waking up at 7am every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah I really can't and like I guess not having the creative freedom mm. you know in something you're gonna work 40 hours a week is a week yeah it's quite suffering Right, especially for someone that likes to draw their own stuff. You know, you, yeah. you want to create something and you want to be passionate about your work. So, yeah, uh, I gave myself one year. Yeah. Right after graduation, I gave myself a year to see if I could make anything work. So, to survive, thankfully, I didn't have a lot of like financial responsibilities back mm-hmm. then because I'm the youngest child. So all I had to do was basically feed myself. Uh, after graduation, I had two hundred dollars in my bank because design school sucks all your money, <laughs> right? Your printing costs and stuff like that. So I had two hundred dollars, and I was like, okay, let's do something. Uh, with that amount of money, I just took my art from Polly from my final year project and made it into sticker packs into prints I also made bookmarks so things that are very very low cost Mm. yeah and then started an Instagram Facebook and back then you know you don't have money to start a website so I I think I I was on store envy or something yeah (laughs) yeah and then basically started with zero followers and Mm. then you grew from from Uh, slowly slowly grew from there so that was um, what eight years ago, mm, two thousand thirteen, oh, okay. and then um, beside from this um, creating my own products, right? I also worked in several part time jobs. Mm. Yeah, so I was working as a part time illustrator for a like tourism brand. Mm. Yeah, a startup. The boss actually she taught me quite a few things about costings, like making a T shirt. How much you sh- sh- you should <laughs> sell your T-shirt? So it all started from eight years ago, you know, like oh. even before Sarah Thursday was born. Oh, thank you, boss. <laughs> thank you, boss. And back then, I really didn't expect myself to even be making T-shirts. So when you start, you know, like all these are goals that you grow next time. So you really don't have to start from much. Mm. Uh, yeah, I feel yeah. You can start from very very humble beginnings and slowly you learn new things and you grow new aspirations and dreams that you want to hit. Mm. Yeah, new milestones. 
So going mm. back to the whole um, working in a company thing. Mm. Yes, <laughs> so <shows> your side. <laughs> uh, yeah, I basically started. Um, I I was the kind of kid who, um, you know, you you always hear that one kid that talks about how they they study and and learn everything. I did ballet <laughs> when Ooh. I was around seven or eight. Cool. I also did a lot of like uh, calligraphy. A lot of batik painting, and then I was, I mean, I was um, also sent to an after-school care, and that's where th- they had other activities. And I was really into golf at one point, <laughs> like mm, I golf? had golf. So um, I had custom-measured uh, golf clubs and stuff like Whoa. that. It was it was crazy. I went on to do rollerblading and stuff. So I was that one kid that that. Um, studied and and learned everything, mm. so um, but I knew that I always liked art, and I decided um, when I was in secondary school to pursue um, something to do with drawing, and mm. then I went on to do uh, I studied uh, animation, and when I got out, I my very first job was doing three uh, D animation. Mm. So I was a three D artist. I I used Maya. Yeah, I I did that for about um, two two to three years and then I decided um, I wanted to draw I, I like drawing more mm. so then um, I managed to find a company that was doing children's animation so I had my dream job where I did a concept artist oh yeah I, I saw yeah so I was a concept artist for a bit so for children animation. so you animations. created like characters for the show yeah, and, and stuff props like that, right? and stuff like that yeah. yeah. So then from there, um, I actually, I, <laughs> I actually had a sickness. Mm. So, um, long story short, it was just like a, a skin condition I had to deal with. Um, I I spoke about it a bit on my Patreon, so like Patreon users should know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I was forced to quit my job, not by not by my company. Or it was just like you know I had to heal. Mm. So um, yeah, I had to heal. But I still needed um, to earn some money somehow. Mm. And then um, I was invited by a group of friends to just... Um, hey, like, because they knew I I drew. So they invited me to booth with them. Oh, yeah. where, where was that? Um, I think it was... Uh, I can't remember. What's that What's that game one? Oh, uh... W, w, WC... No, wait, no. WCG. Oh, I can't games? remember, but it's the game game one. Yeah, I, yeah there was there's a game convention. Oh no, I I forgot the name. <laughs> eh. But yeah, I, I booked there once as well. Mm, yeah. So then after that, I did EOI with oh, them EOI. as well. End yeah. of year event. And then that's yeah, like like I mentioned, that's when I realized that you know maybe I should just do my own brand. And then that was about four years ago. Okay. So and and now today I'm here. So I have to thank my my gaming friends for inviting me. <laughs> oh, that's mm. cool. Yeah. So that's cool because it's quite different. Like you had friends who like put you along. Hey, let's booth together. Mm. For me, I didn't do conventions until I think 2016. So the first three or four years, I was actually doing art markets instead. Mm. Yeah. So my style was actually more vintage Victorian look it wasn't very Japanese culture inspired back then and I did very raw looking things so like you know raw tote bags <laughs> raw pouches our, our first our first, first con ever. booth table is probably like yeah <laughs> very raw <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's very different style and very different vibe from what I'm creating uh, right now so yeah it's like how I, I also started with fan art and then now you don't see much fan art from me anymore. Mm, mm. So yeah, it's all a journey and we change during all these years. We find out what works best for us, what works best for the people that view our art and enjoy mm. our art. And we just keep crafting and improving ourselves, our merch, our illustrations and even our business thought process. Even now we are still learning. We're still growing. Yeah, we're we learning. are not like, you know, we are there. No, no, mm-hmm. we're not. Yeah. Mm. So um, it, it's a it's a long journey. It never ends. Yeah, and like yeah. I would say, like if you're playing a game, right? There's never like a final boss when you're running your own illustration business. You're, 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 there's always like 
different milestones. For example, if you you go to your first conversion, you booth at your first conversion, and maybe that's your first mini board. And after defeating it, you know, you level up. So you're always learning and learning. You're gaining, literally gaining experience and learning to do things better, learning to do things more efficiently. Mm. Yeah, and then you learn to do things faster as well. Yeah, it's more of like um, we are also always researching. Mm. We're always learning. So yeah, it the the growth never stops. The growth. Mm. Yeah, and I think what I enjoy um, the most at like convention booths or art market booths is actually meeting mm. my customers face to face, my supporters because. You finally see the faces behind, you know, like people on social media commenting. You see them in real life. You remember their names,、mm. and then you also learn about their interests and what they like about your work. You make like personal、um, relationships with them, and that's very important for me.、Mm. I feel like、yeah. that is one of the biggest benefits of being a, a con artist. It's、mm. yeah, it's. Putting names to faces、mm. and just seeing you guys is like really, really rewarding. Yeah, it did actually take me five years <laughs> to go full time, full time. I mean, for me, it, I'm not like saying I have I have enough to become stable, stable.、Mm. But it's enough for me to live <laughs> day、Survive. to day. Yeah, eat, I'm eat still、rice. I'm still trying my best to grow bigger. So I had a lot of、um, side jobs. While growing Sarah Thursday, <laughs> so one of the longest、um, side jobs I had was、uh, working at a cat cafe. It's called Neko Noniwa, and I basically worked there for five years, four to five years.、Mm. Yeah, and、um, maybe like two, two or three days a week, I would go to the cat cafe. Yeah,、oh. and then I also had like event jobs. Photo booth event jobs, you know, like I would just help to edit photos and print photos for the event itself. So these are things like jobs that are very flexible.、Mm. You can fix your schedule, fix your timing, and then on the extra time you can work on your own label. So all this really help to help me survive. And whatever extra money I have, I would just invest it into making more merch. <laughs> Yeah, so if I save a few hundred dollars, I'll bet. Okay, um, let me try making something new.、Mm. Maybe now I'll start to make pouches or tote bags. And I guess my biggest break was when I started making T-shirts. That's like, when you found like your medium.、Basically. Yeah, my yeah. my medium, and that's what I guess Sarah Thursday is kind of known for right now.、Mm. Yeah, so、I、kind of want to expand on. Creating more、um, apparels, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm headed.、Mm. Mm. Speaking of side jobs,、um, in secondary school, I I did like、uh, basketball for a bit, do everything, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then in in the later years, I decided to、uh, join the English literature drama debate club. So. <laughs> Yeah, I and then um I realized that like I kind of liked acting a bit. What? <laughs> and then so when I、uh, I think when I graduated or when I was still in poly, um one of my first side jobs was that I was an extra for a for a local director. I、mm. won't say his name, but、mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. So you see me in the background and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm I'm not gonna say the movie. So if you guys actually do find it, which I think. Uh, it's a challenge to you guys, but I don't think you might you guys might find it.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did that for a bit, and then I think I naturally went into animation because acting out something and and、um, being able to reference it to an animation is like something that I was interested in. It was like best of both worlds for me because I liked art as well.、Mm. So yeah, from there it just grew to what it is now. <laughs> yeah, I think the most. Important thing is really to persevere、mm. and also be very organized. I can I can just say like、um, just start slow. 
Start like slow. you're seeing people. I, I think you're. I think if you're just starting out, you're seeing people. You know, make enamel pins mm. and stuff. And and enamel pins cost a lot of money to make. Mm. Um, you you don't have to start there. You don't have to um follow a, a trend. But find your own uh style or your own like yeah niche. I guess. Mm. I mean um, like your your yeah. illustration style will. Suit different merchandise mm. compared to another person's illustration style. Yeah. yeah, and and we get a lot of um questions about uh how do you find your own style and stuff. And for me, I feel like um there's no such thing as finding a style. I feel like if you know you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of memes going around where it's like huh, I don't have a style, and then you show like all the different kinds of art. But I feel like that's Um, you're still in your experimental phase. Mm. I feel like a style is more like what you like and what you don't like. Like let's say, um, I don't like shading in 3D, mm. so you don't do that. And then like I like um, drawing my eyes like this. So that's how you develop your own style. No, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that reminds me of how I actually developed my own style <laughs> because you're just taking things that you like and putting them into your own style. Taking things you don't like, you know. Taking it out mm, of so what you usually draw. Your style is basically your preference, your yeah. preferences. It's just like fashion, for example. Like you like this shirt, you like this color. It's just piecing things and elements together to form your own mm. style. So I would say my style is actually I really enjoy you know Victorian mm. etching, the vintage etching style. So a lot of line art and and then. I also enjoy Japanese culture, so I kind of infused the elements from what I enjoy drawing from Japanese culture, like yokais or like shibari, right? And then I'll use my vintage etching style, the illustration style, and piecing those ideas together. So I think that's how I found my own niche, and it's still growing actually. Yeah, yeah, like if you if you were to see my art from like three four years ago when I started versus now, it's it's different. Mm. So yeah, it's always growing. So there is no rush for you to you know find an own your own style and stuff. Yeah. Just I mean, take your time. Mm. Just um, you see Sarah's style, and um, she found T-shirts as a medium, mm. and it works very well. Mm. So find a medium that suits your art. Mm. And for Shams, she does a lot of mini enamel pins and like <laughs> tokens, and her stuff looks really good as prints oh, as well, because of the color she used. So, I think the most important thing, right, is to be. Okay, it sounds so cliche, but like to be true to yourself first, kind of develop yourself, and not constantly compare yourself to other artists out there. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. So once you start looking inwards, like what you enjoy, and kind of absorbing all the inspirations from different artists, different shows, anime games, and inputting them into your personal artwork, I think that's how you develop your style, and that's how you feel good about what you're creating because mm. it's something you're actually passionate about. Yeah, you don't have to. Like, hey, that person's so famous <laughs> and like so successful. What can I be? What can I do to be like her? Mm. That's I, I think it's quite an unhealthy mindset because if you can't get to her level, then you'll start like, what am I doing wrong? Like, I know? mean, it. Uh, we we say all this, but we we understand that it's is difficult. Mm. Um, I mean, we have our own insecurities yeah, as of well. Course. And like you know the whole imposter syndrome, <laughs> and like am I even am I even good enough to be doing this podcast? You know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, But mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just just stay stay true to yourself, and um, you you'll get you'll find there. yeah you'll find an audience that likes what you're doing yeah, as well. And if you are happy about what you're producing, you attract the people that enjoy what you do. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about whether people or not. Viewing your stuff, you know, like you just need to be happy with yourself, happy with what you're creating, and tell all your friends about what you're doing. That's how I started. Literally, go everywhere and like <laughs> just promote yourself. I started Thursday 
um, have 70 followers do you, do you want to <laughs> check out my work you know that's really it was by word of mouth mm. yeah I I never ever I feel like I've never been viral in a way you know so like a lot of artists they grow so fast right mm. for me it was extremely gradual mm. and I think I enjoy that because many of the people that like, support me have actually made conversations with them before mm. I feel close to them and being personable with as many people as possible who enjoy my art is so important yeah, like it's, we remember yeah. we remember like patron names yeah. uh, returning customers that kind of thing yeah. it, it means a lot to us so it's yeah. like growing our own community mm. and yeah it's not the number the huge numbers you see on social media likes or your followers every single one who follows you right I feel like they are like so important mm-hmm. they, are, they are so precious and you should like focus on them and like, not focus on the people that haven't followed you yet you know focus on the people who already enjoy what you're doing you know like want to support except you except the bots <laughs> except the bots and although yes we are all slaves to the algorithm but <sighs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's part of it's part of um, building and promoting. You have to, I won't say like you know follow the algorithms and and do all the latest trends, but you mm. know just think about what is best for you. If like posting every day is is posting every day is is crazy. I mean, I used to do that though. <laughs> personally, I feel like posting every day is crazy. Um, Definitely, um, for me, it's quality over quantity. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So take pride in your work. The, um, don't like you know, don't rush. Mm, don't rush. Mm, and just be proud of what you do. But I guess everyone will find a style, a work style that suits them. Mm. Yeah. So I used to post every day because I thought being regular with your updates will will help people see what you're doing. But you need to balance. Of course, you need balance, good quality, oh, yeah. quantity. Yeah, but and now I post less because it's so tiring. Yeah, definitely yeah. you have to balance between your work and, and your real life. Yeah, and then, yeah, as much as we are slaves to algorithm, you know, Instagram starting algorithms in, I think, 2016. And right now, that's, it's always, always changing. Mm. But you, as a business, you also need to learn to adapt. I'm not saying like follow trends or what, but sometimes you need to learn to jump onto like, um, you know, TikTok for example <laughs> to to kind of find a new audience because you can't be keep you can't keep being stuck in your old ways and not growing as well. So you need to learn to find new ways to explore new ways as mm. well to grow. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. what we will say always have many many plans yeah. I would say plan A plan, plan B a, plan, plan C <laughs> yeah exactly and when plan A example uh, Instagram starts cutting your exposure that was when I decided to um, really focus on conventions actually mm. because real life both right you know no one can do anything to it people will always be there because it's an anime convention <laughs> I mean and you got the, the human traffic already. Yeah And then yeah. when the human traffic come They see your work in real life You interact with them And they'll find you on Instagram as well So mm. You know when something doesn't work You have to find another way that works It's yeah. like It's like how um, Because there are no cons Right now um, mm. In Singapore So we have been adapting <laughs> So we've been Yeah <laughs> So we've been um, focusing on online, mm. uh, online shops. You know, mm. uh, I know Sarah is like collabing with um, shop real uh, shop uh, shop lucky owners, shop. Yeah, yeah, real shop fronts and stuff. Yeah, collabing with different brands mm. as well. So yeah, we we always searching for new avenues mm. and searching for new um, experiences and ways to grow what we are already doing. And sometimes. It might seem very daunting Like starting this podcast Was actually <laughs> Super nerve-wracking For both of us We mm. had to Kind of break out From a lot of our insecurities In order to Be sitting here Speaking into a mic 
you know. But it's gonna be so rewarding、mm. like、once you're out of your comfort zone.、Mm. This podcast was actually suggested by Sarah. <laughs> 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 yeah, which、um, kind of surprised me also, but it was very out of the blue. Yeah, it surprised、definitely. myself. Okay, I surprised myself. But how, uh, how did you suddenly want to go in, into this? I think it's also because, like, I recently since you know, we're all everything is online right now. Even panel talks are online. I am.、Um, there have been a few people inviting me for you know, like, hey, do you want to join this like Zoom? Webinar, panel, webinar, panel talk thing. So, I think Skate Makers Market they invited me to do like a panel talk, like be、mm. one of the panel artists, kind of talking about my experiences, booth thing, and how I started the label, any advice, stuff like that. And I realized that I think that's where I also want to head instead of just being stuck in. Doing my own thing, right? One of the things I want to do is mentor the younger generation as well. Yeah, especially like from where,、uh, from where we studied from,、um, building your own brand and being a freelancer is something that isn't really taught in school、mm. and stuff. You don't learn、yeah. the business side because you you learn it on your own. Like learn it from people who have been in and out of your lives. Give you advice.、Hmm. You take in advice from so many people, and also、um, by boosting, you learn to do things more efficiently.、Hmm. This is kind of a shortcut, you know. <laughs> like we want to teach people from our experiences, so you don't have to experiment it on yourself either. But I say that experimenting is also very important.、Hmm. And then the、yeah. thing is, is that you know you might try. Yeah, give yourself like like maybe. A year, two years, like Sarah, and then if it's、mm. something that doesn't work out for you, it's fine.、Mm. It's okay.、Mm-hmm. It just means that、um, there's something else planned for you. Yeah, yeah. It that you know that it's.、Um, some people might say it's like a trendy thing right now to you know、um, be a, be an owner of a small business, but it's difficult. <laughs>、mm. Yeah, it's it's very difficult and. You know, if it doesn't work out, it's fine, really. Yeah, I think it's important、yeah. to be very objective as well.、Mm. So yeah, I gave myself one year, and if it doesn't work out, I'll send in my resume <laughs> to places I want to work as. Like even for now, we don't know if we'll be doing this in the future <laughs>、mm. because it's、I、so new. It, everything will evolve. Yeah, we might not be doing the exact same thing, but yeah, we we will do something related. Uh, everything evolves. We might not be having a label or anything, but we might be working with other companies,、mm. building people stable. I don't know, <laughs> you know, consultant. No, <laughs> but、um, yeah, we, I we think we rented a lot. <laughs> just to end off,、um, I would say, you know, like when you do things passionately, and you don't. Um, keep comparing yourself to other people, right? You grow your own labor from a little, little tiny little thing.、Um, every little success will taste super, super sweet, <laughs> right? You'll be so proud of yourself, and if you achieve everything out of your own hard work,、uh, humility, and honesty, I think people will see that. Yeah,、mm. people will see that vibe of you, and they want to. Support you as well, so I think, yeah, that's very important. Hopefully, you guys、uh, mm. were able to relate here and there to our story as well.、Mm. Um, yeah, so、uh, this is the first episode.、Um, yeah, we will probably be addressing more other topics、yeah. in more detail. But、mm. if you have any other questions. Um, we might. I don't know if if this does well. We might even bring guests and stuff. So if you have any suggestion、yeah. for guests, and、um, uh, yeah, yeah, any so, questions and stuff, just comment,、um, DM us. We'll read them. So、mm. future topics would probably be、uh, more advice on starting a business. Yeah. So this is just like a, a warm up. Yeah. I guess to to warm ourselves up also because、yeah. we are like super nervous. Yeah, and then maybe. <laughs> Since there's a lot of people graduating from their diploma right now, we might talk about how school affected、um, our thoughts、mm. and our work culture as we started a business. 
Yeah, because actually Shams and I have a pretty different approach. Yeah. Yeah. The way we so do things. We'll talk about stuff. all these little little details and hopefully you You guys will come and yeah, join and us. Talk <laughs> some of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. about it. Thank you. Thanks for watching today. And Thanks see for you watching next Thanks episode. For listening. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye bye. Oh my god. Wow, so long. <laughs>